Universal Audio have just added two new devices to their budget-friendly range of Volt audio interfaces. I'm Ed Thorne and I'm recording the audio for this video through the new Volt 476P. Combined with the Universal Audio SD1 microphone here, it's capturing a clear, smooth and present voiceover, but let's see how we can improve this further with features on the interface. I should note, besides level setting, there has been no post-production, EQ or other processing applied to this audio. All the Vault interfaces feature Vintage Mode, an additional analog preamp circuit that increases the second and third harmonics in our audio. Based on the subtle colour of Universal Audio's LA610 tube preamp, famous since the 1950s and used on records by the likes of Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, The Beach Boys and Van Halen. As you can hear in my voice, engaging vintage modes adds sparkle to the mid-range, creating a more forward sound. The preamps and vintage mode are identical on all Volt interface models, so this can be achieved with the Volt 1 through to the new Volt 4 and Volt 476P models. The 76 models of the Volt interfaces also feature a built-in, fully analog FET compressor circuit with a fixed 6 to 1 ratio and three different preset ballistics modes based on the 1176LN attack and release controls capable of microsecond attack times in fast mode. Engaging the compressor circuit adds approximately 6 dB of gain to the signal, which I've compensated for in post-production. Be sure to watch your gain structures when engaging this circuit. In this example, I've engaged the vocal compression circuit. As you'll notice on the interface, I have the gain set to about 75-80% because I'm using a typically gain-hungry dynamic microphone. So actually, the additional 5 or 6 decibels of gain from the compressor circuit is actually quite useful with lower output microphones such as the SD1 one or an SM7B. Here's my voice through the Vault 476P preamps dry. Here's my voice through the Vault 476P preamps with vintage mode imposed. And here's my voice through the Vault 476P with vintage mode and the 76 compressor circuit engaged set to vocal mode. At the click of two buttons, I can immediately capture a smooth, full and forward sounding vocal. This processing can be applied to all four inputs, making this interface great for recording drums, Glyn John style, a multi-host podcast or even a band rehearsal. Now, do you think these features will speed up your productions? Let me know in the comments below. So as demonstrated, we can record audio through the vintage mode and compressor circuits directly from the source. We can also reamp and mix through these circuits as if we had external analog hardware by using the additional outputs on the Volt 4, 476 and 476P. Here I have a bass track that I'm routing out of Logic using the I.O. plugin sending the audio to output 3 and I've routed this directly back into line input 3 of the Volt 476P. The ping function in Logic will calculate any delay compensation required to compensate for the round trip latency created by the I.O. plugin, which as we can see here is 12 samples in this example. And here's how it sounds reamped through the Volt 476P preamps. And engaging vintage mode. And finally engaging the compressor circuit set to guitar mode.
combination of the preamp, vintage mode, and the compressor circuit creates a thick, even bass sound. Definitely something we could easily blend into a mix. The 476P hosts line outputs alongside your monitor outputs, so you could run four sends, such as bass, lead vocals, mono guitars, and or single drum channels simultaneously through the onboard processing. Note the vaults are a four channel USB driver. Your door will automatically assign outputs one and two to your monitor outputs, so you can utilize outputs three and four for loopback processing whilst listening through your speakers. Alternatively, if you wanted to use all four output channels, you would need to assign these in your door and monitor using headphones and vaults built in low latency direct input monitoring on these switches. For the release of these two new interfaces, Universal Audio haven't stopped here with these features. On top of the comprehensive software bundle included with the Vault Audio interfaces already, Universal Audio are also giving you the LA-2A compressor collection of native plugins as a promo. This means you have access to the most classic compression units ever made, the Analog 76 FET on the interface and the Tube Optical LA-2A emulation in the plugin. Let's put the original LA-2A plugin onto our reamp bass recording. The option to utilize this classic double compression technique, which is especially great on vocals, gives us some very flexible processing options. There's a link in the description to this video quickly explaining the double compression technique in more detail. And of course, if we want to use additional analog hardware, such as EQs, we can of course insert these into the signal chain, looping back into the vault as demonstrated. Now we can't bypass the preamps on the vault, but by using the line input and keeping the input gain low, we can minimize the influence of the preamps if this is undesired. However, I think in the examples demonstrated, the preamp influence is very positive. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Vault enables you to select and toggle between pairs and inputs and outputs for monitoring with these four monitor source buttons on the device. One particularly useful trick with this feature is to assign a reference track to feed outputs three and four and have this continuously playing in the background. Then toggling between monitor source output selectors to switch between your mix and the reference source. The source for your reference track could be a Spotify playlist, a track in your DAW, another application like Final Cut Pro X, a website like YouTube, or even another DAW. To route Spotify or YouTube to outputs three and four, we need to load audio MIDI setup on Mac. Make sure the vault is selected, go to configure speakers, and set the system audio to outputs three and four. Your door will still send your master bus feed to outputs one and two, so you can toggle between the two monitor sources and reference your mix. To reference with a track in your DAW, load a reference track onto a new track. This could be a previous mix or a full master, and assign the track to outputs three and four. Simply toggle between the two monitor sources on the vault to go between your mix and the reference track. In this instance, I gained down the mastered track by 4.5 dB to roughly match the LUFS levels, so we can still gauge the perceived volume difference, but we're not being tricked into thinking the louder track is better. This will help us focus on the stereo imaging, the tonality, and the foundation of the two mixes. The Volt 476P features two headphone outputs. I think this is a welcome addition to the range. The volumes can be independently controlled, but unfortunately the mix and balance of each headphone output cannot. These will be the same sense. This kind of feature is one of the many perks of the Apollo series audio interfaces. To find out more about the Apollo audio interfaces, check out the link to this video here. The Vault interfaces are bus powered from the included USB cable. Power can also be supplied by the included 5 volt power cable, which frees up the USB port for connectivity with your iPhone and iPad iOS devices. This feature is great for mobile recording situations, such as recording band rehearsals, a touring podcast, or full productions directly into GarageBand.
The Volt 4 and 476P are welcome additions to the range, offering attractive features at a great price point. The addition of the LA2N Pure Plate Reverb plugins to the promotional software bundle makes an already attractive package even better value for money. The reamping technique I demonstrated I think will appeal to a lot of people without the budgets for external hardware, but wanting a similar analog effect. For more information about the Volt audio interfaces, how they sound and perform, watch my in-depth review of the Volt 2 and 276 here, also linked in the description. The Volt 2 and 276 are also available in recording bundles, including a condenser microphone and a set of headphones, so check those out in the links in the description as well. I've been Ed Thorne, thanks for watching, subscribe for regular home studio content, be kind to one another, and I'll see you on the next one.